Now let's try to maximize this function f of x, y, and z. So we are going to do three variables. But let's keep it simple. It's just x, y, z. Uh, and we want to do this subject to four inequality constraints. So I'm going to have x plus y plus z is less than or equal to zero, or less than or equal to one, sorry. X is greater than or equal to zero, Y is greater than or equal to zero, and Z is greater than or equal to zero. So the zeroth step, before you do anything else, you need to make sure the inequalities are going in the proper direction. So, x plus y plus z is less than or equal to 1 is going in the right direction. This one, we need to negate x in order to get the, in the correct direction. We negate y to get this inequality in the correct direction, and we negate z. And now we're in a position to actually find what's going to happen. So now we check the non-degenerate constraint qualification. Well, if we take the full Jacobian of these constraints, right? Well, the gradient of this constraint is just going to be 1, 1, 1. The gradient of this constraint is negative 1, 0, 0. Of this constraint function, it's 0, negative 1, 0. Of this constraint function, it's 0, 0, 1, negative. And uh, since at most 1 or 3 inequalities, are binding, right, so if all four inequalities were binding, we would have x is equal to y is equal to z is equal to zero, which contradicts the fact that this one could ever be binding. So since at most three inequalities are binding and all collections of three rows are linearly independent, and you can verify that pretty readily. We have that the NDCQ will be satisfied. Right, so basically in this situation we just had to check to see that every every set of three rows is going to be full rank, and that will be the situation. The step after this is to form the Lagrangian. Now this gets a little long-winded. We've got Lagrangian of x, y, z. And because I have four inequalities, I have four Lagrange multipliers. Minus lambda three times negative y 
minus lambda 4 times negative z. And kind of simplifying, because we've got a double negations over here, we have x, y, z minus lambda 1, x plus y plus z minus 1, plus lambda 2x plus lambda 3y plus lambda 4z. That's our Lagrangian. And now we write the first order conditions. So we've got the partial of L with respect to X is equal to YZ minus lambda 1 plus lambda 2. That's 0. Partial of L with respect to Y is equal to XZ minus lambda 1 plus lambda 3 is equal to 0. Partial of L with respect to Z is equal to XY minus lambda 1 plus lambda 4, which is equal to 0. I have the four complementary slackness conditions. Lambda 1, X plus Y plus Z minus 1 is equal to 0. Lambda 2x is equal to 0. Lambda 3y is equal to 0. And lambda 4z is equal to 0. And I have all the inequalities that I have to satisfy. And there are a lot of them. I've got all the inequalities for my Lagrange multipliers. These are all greater than or equal to 0. And of course I have the four original constraints. So these are all the conditions that I have to satisfy. There's a lot of them, so it should be, in some sense, relatively easy to figure out or reduce the number of problems, or the, the number of points that satisfy the system. So, uh, so we immediately see, so of course we, we want to check the partials with respect to x, y, and z first. So now we, we solve, so find points, find critical points. Of the Lagrangian. We immediately see from these, they all involve the common term lambda 1. So we get that lambda 1 is equal to yz plus lambda 2 is equal to xz plus lambda 3 is equal to xy plus lambda 4. So we're going to split into two cases immediately. So either uh, lambda 1 is equal to 0, and here we're going to assume that lambda is lambda 1 is greater than 0. Well, if lambda 1 is equal to 0, right, in this situation, what happens? Well, that means yz, all these numbers, yz plus lambda 2, xz plus lambda 3, xy plus lambda 4, those are equal to 0, right? But look at the conditions that we have x is greater than 0, z is greater than 0, and lambda 2 is greater than 0, which means that this is a positive number, right? This is a positive number, so we get a positive number plus a positive number, and it equals 0. And therefore, I have to have that yz is equal to 0, and lambda 2 is equal to 0. Similarly, for these guys. So here, we'll get that lambda 2 is equal to lambda 3 is equal to lambda 4 is equal to 0 by that observation. And then I also have that yz is equal to 
xz is equal to xy is equal to zero. So these numbers all equal to zero doesn't mean that they all have to be equal to zero though. Um, so in particular, uh, we have three potential points that can work. So I'm gonna let t be some variable. I have t, zero, zero, and then zero, 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 zero. So this is x, y, z, lambda one, lambda two, lambda three, lambda four. That can be a point that satisfies this system. Zero, t, zero, 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 zero. And zero, zero, t, zero, 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 zero. And this is for t in between zero and one. So these are all potential solutions, all potential solutions. So now suppose that lambda one is greater than zero. Well, if lambda one is greater than zero, now let's suppose, say x is equal to zero. Well, if x is equal to zero, then I've got that lambda three is equal to lambda one, which is also greater than zero. So lambda three is greater than zero. Well, if lambda three is greater than zero, my complementary slackness condition means that y is equal to zero. Additionally, we have that when we plug it into here, we've got that, so lambda three, uh, lambda three is equal to zero. If we plug it into here, we've got that lambda four is greater than zero, and so z has to be zero. So in this situation, we have that x is equal to zero, y is equal to zero, and z is equal to zero. But remember that lambda greater than zero means that I have to satisfy this complementary slackness condition, right? And the complementary slackness condition for lambda one is that x plus y plus z has to be equal to one. And so we get a contradiction. So contradiction. So similarly, we'll get that x has to be greater than zero, y has to be greater than zero, and z has to be greater than zero. If all these guys are greater than zero, then the complementary slackness conditions imply that lambda two equals lambda three equals lambda four is equal to zero. And that means that lambda one is equal to yz is equal to xz is equal to xy. If you look at this, this actually implies that x is equal to y is equal to z. And since x plus y plus z minus one has to be equal to zero. We have that x equals y equals z equals one third. And therefore lambda one is equal to one ninth. And we have the point one third, one third, one third, one ninth, zero, zero, zero. So th those are all the points. And now what's step five? Step five is uh, identify the max. Well, uh, f of t zero, zero, of course, remember that f is just x times y times z. This is equal to f of zero t zero, 
which is in turn equal to f of 0, 0, t, which is equal to 0. And so that's that. And f of 1 third, 1 third, 1 third is equal to, well, it'll be 1 third times 1 third times 1 third, which is 1 over 27. Uh, and therefore, this is the max. And that concludes the problem.